Oh, Alpine, what are you doing? The French team are really doing their best to be like Ferrari Light, and between Ferrari's strategists and Alpine's management, there's enough clowns in the paddock to truly call F1 a traveling circus. The latest sacking, sorry, I mean parting of ways with Otmar, has really highlighted the cracks that are showing at the pink and blue team. Well, it looks like the revolving door at Alpine will be working again, and this time, it looks like we are set to see a familiar face walk through the doors at Enstone, or could it be very Châtillon. Who knows, but as they say when one door closes, another opens and Otmar could be in for a return at one of his former teams. Want to know who is replacing Otmar at Alpine and will he be a good fit? Well, stick around to find out where Otmar is headed. It looks like Fernando may be on for another shock reunion. The Renault-owned team is in crisis after a mass exodus of key personnel. The latest departures are the team principal Otmar Zafnauer, sporting director Alan Permain, and chief technical officer Pat Fry. Now, Mr. Fry may have seen the writing on the wall, as not only has he found himself another job, but he has managed to land a gig at the resurgent Williams, who suddenly look like they are headed in the right direction under James Vowles. Those departures come just a week after CEO Rossi was replaced, and in the last 18 months, the Enstone team has also lost double world champion driver Fernando Alonso, superstar rookie Oscar Piastri, and former executive director Marcin Bukowski. They have also lost Cyril Abitable. That is a pretty heavy brain drain and some talent to leave the team. I mean, we called them Ferrari lights earlier, but at this rate, they may just surpass their Italian counterparts. Although Ferrari have just let go of Mechies, the jury's out, but maybe you guys should let us know what you think and whether you think that Alpine are turning into the French Ferrari. It's one thing for us to have our opinions and think that we know how it's going inside every complicated structure and inner running of an F1 team, but when a former legend of the sport returns a scathing attack on the F1 team, then best you stand up and listen, and that is exactly what's happened as Alpine. The legend in question is Alan Prost, and although he never raced for the Enstone based team, he has a long standing affiliation with Renault and was a non consecutive director of the team until he left in a criminous circumstances in January 2022. We are not sure if the four time world champion is still fuming with his exit from the team, but let's just say he unleashed an extraordinary attack on his former employers. I love this team, and seeing it in this state today saddens me. She deserves better and has all the assets to get there. I just believe that you have to rely on the history to understand the error. If you look at the great success of the last 30 years, you will find a simple structure, detached from an industrial organization chart, built around three or four strong personalities coupled with a champion driver, Alan wrote in his column for L'Equipe. Reading between the lines, it looks like Alan feels that there is just too much interference from the C-suite of Alpine, or let's just call it the corporate arm of the team. Sounds familiar as that's how Ferrari like to operate as well. Hmm, starting to draw some serious conclusions here. Alan also had some choice words for the departing CEO of Alpine. They are also pretty scathing. Lauren Rossi is the finest example of the Dunning-Kruger effect, that of an incapable leader who thinks he can overcome his incompetence by his arrogance and lack of humanity towards his troops. The one who was the boss of Alpine for 18 months thought he had understood everything from the start when he was totally misguided. His management broke the momentum that had been in place since 2016 to achieve these podiums in this victory. It is to be hoped that the decision taken on Friday to change other faces will be a salutary electroshock for the team. Continued Prost. Just in case you were wondering, the Dunning-Kruger effect is a cognitive bias whereby people with low ability, expertise, or experience regarding a type of task or area of knowledge tend to overestimate their ability or knowledge. Ouch. Not exactly the backing you need, but sometimes things just need to be said as they are. As much as Alan wants to put the blame on Lauren Rossi, some of this must sit at Otmar's feet. Last year's silly season with Oscar and Fernando was a hugely embarrassing ordeal for Alpine and Renault, with the dramas revealing how Alpine had mismanaged both the the situation with Alonso and later Piastri. Zafnauer had already blotted his copybook. Although Alpine chose to fire Benedict Mercer, the team's director of legal affairs, rather than go higher. But Zafnauer needed results, and to show signs of progress as 2023 began. Unfortunately for him, the A523 has proven less competitive, and with precious few results, Rossi took to the media to publicly drag the team through the mud. A move that showed, with startling clarity, just how lacking in cohesion Alpine's upper management was. Otmar, like any team principal, will say he needs more time, and let's just say that the American had a rather interesting way of saying that he should have been given more time. 
the reality is that the changes take time. I signed some good people from other teams, but they are still stuck in their contracts and won't come until 2024 or 2025. You can't really push development if people aren't there. It takes time for people to come and it takes time for people to work together correctly. I always say you can't get nine women pregnant and hope that you have a baby in a month, said Otmar. But after more than 30 years, Pemain's loyalty to his Endstone colleagues can't be called into question. What is it about the current Alpine team that has resulted in long-term employees like him crying though? Why did a beatable have enough? Why were Alonso and Prost, both Renault world champions, willing to cut and run? Well, the most obvious answer is that when the teams that were behind you start to perform, the pressure ramps up. Aston Martin went from a laughing stock to taking a huge step forward in the winter, looking like they may be the team to challenge Red Bull, but not only that, in the constructors, they could finish third if Ferrari don't get their act together. McLaren, who would be considered Alpine's main rival, also took massive leaps forward if you discount the Belgian Grand Prix, where the Papaya-based team just got it wrong. The huge steps that both teams made probably led to the demise of Otmar and Pemain, something Famine pointed out in his interview. At one stage, you realize that we are not on the same paths on this when we decide to split ways, Famine said. Pressed for details on how Alpine's upper management differed in their views on the timeline to success compared to Zafnauer and Pemain, Fermin said, We're not talking about figures. I think we had a different view in the way of doing it, and of course, it is in terms of timeline, but we are not exactly the same in doing the things. What is important to us is the project. I think we have a clear objective, and it's not only the Formula 1 team that has a strategy. The full brand on both halves are totally linked. Well, it wouldn't be F1 without a bit of drama now, would it? So Otmar gets the sack, and who's in the best place to replace him? Well, look no further than everyone's favorite strategist, Mattia Binotto. We're not sure if this is Binotto's plan A, B, or C, or maybe it's 1A. Either way, the Ferrari boss is without a job, and with the most recent news of the FIA stepping in to allow teams to work on the engine if there's more than a 3% difference in output. This is only from 2026, and is even more reason for Alpine to sign Mattia Binotto as it's well known in F1 that the Italian is an engine guru. His experience of Ferrari will be invaluable. For now, Fermin's appointment as a team boss is an interim arrangement. But what might be the next step for Alpine? After all, in light of the turmoil of the past 18 months, a steady hand at the tiller is required. Someone with experience and someone with main manufacturer experience. So what about Mattia Bonotto, the currently unemployed former Ferrari team boss? After all, given his relevant experience as the leader of a corporate team who apparently don't understand the importance of stability and his experience of leading a power unit operation, would this hiring not make complete sense? We're not at that stage, Fermin said of the possibility. Martin Brundle believes that where there is smoke, there is fire, and that the rumor of Bonotto could be on the way. I've heard the same rumor. This is a funny old place, as you know. You can start a rumor just for fun and see how quickly it comes back to you as a fact. But it's not out of the question. Bonotto has got a lot of experience, obviously in the Ferrari system, and knows about running a Formula 1 team. Obviously, it didn't work out for him at Ferrari, otherwise he'd still be there. But I wouldn't be surprised if that was announced, he said on Sky Sports. Well, only time will tell if this will happen. But what about Otmar? Where is our favorite American headed? Well, if the rumors are true, then he is heading back to Aston Martin. Now, at this stage, we're not sure if the American would fit in, but maybe he wants to take more of a background role. Now, this is just a rumor and is being sparked by a photo on Twitter, so don't read too much into it. Now, don't you think that Alonso would just love to see Otmar back at the team?